Hello, my name is Marcello, and I want to welcome you to the Source Audio Video Design Group's YouTube channel. On this channel, we will discuss home audio and video, personal audio, home theater, home automation, and speak with some of the movers and shakers in the music and hi-fi industry. So please consider subscribing today to show your support and ring the bell icon to get notified of future live streams and videos. Today I will share my impressions on the Estelle & Kern Ultima SP2000T and discuss any incremental changes in firmware or performance from the initial first look video we did on the SP2000T. If you haven't watched that video yet, I will link it in the video description for you. In that video, I discussed some of the features, build quality, design, and gave some brief impressions on the sound quality of the SP2000T. This video will focus on the quality of sound paired with several different headphones and some comparisons versus the Chord Hugo 2 to go combo, my reference portable headphone amplifier and DAC. One of the first things I want to address is that I made the creative decision to film some of the content from our first look video in slow motion. And several of you asked questions about the speed of the user interface being slow. I wanted to film the SP2000T in real time when showing the user interface in this follow-up video. This way you guys get the complete picture of the user interface, touch sensitivity, and the response time. I don't find the UI to be slow. The startup takes about 30 seconds, then you are up and running. Your main user tools are easily located by pulling down from the top of the display, revealing Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AMP mode, USB mode, and external USB. You can slide over to reveal AK Connect, EQ, Line Out, Replay Gain, and the Settings menu. Another question that came up from a few of our viewers on our first look video was whether there were noise issues when streaming via Wi-Fi with a tube mode engaged. I could not produce any noticeable tube noise issues when streaming, which was the primary way I formulated my sound impressions of the unit. Your mileage may vary, depending on the speed of your network or with the use of highly sensitive IEMs. Still, with a Focal Stelia and the ZMF Verte Open Limited Edition, my noise sniffing headphones, in my house, noise interference was a non-issue. One of my favorite features that was added since the last time I had the SP2000T in the house was the ability for the player to be rune ready via the settings menu. As an avid Rune user, listening to the digital audio player via Rune was my preferred listening method. In practice, since the unit becomes a certified Rune endpoint, once you add the device to Rune via the audio settings of Rune, you will still need your phone, tablet, or computer to control the playback, surfer music, and playlists. Playback takes place almost instantly from the moment I press play on my iPad or iPhone. The track quality info is displayed under the album cover and the song's name. Additional artists, album, and track info will still need to be viewed via your phone, tablet, or computer. MQA support was also added for all of us Tidal users. I use Tidal and Cobuzz through Rune to formulate most of my sound impressions and a few FLAC files preloaded on this review unit for this video. If you are not a Rune, Tidal, or Cobuzz user, you also have several other streaming options such as Amazon Music HD, Apple Music, Spotify, and Deezer to name a few. I don't watch videos on Adapt, but if that is your thing, the SP2000T has V-Link. When starting V-Link, a built-in warning pops up before being allowed to play video that says, the device supports video playback up to 720p. When playing the video above 1080p, it may cause damage to the unit not covered by warranty. I asked ANK about the warning message and they let me know, and I quote, some of the older players with V-Link support have 720p screens and quad-core CPUs. So viewing YouTube videos in 1080p and above resolutions are not optimized for those devices. They said there have not been any issues with players that have V-Link installed. More of a suggestion to not play above 720p for best performance. The newer players such as the SP2000T with full HD screens and octa-core players would play those higher res videos without issue. However, for optimal playback and battery life, ANK still recommends not playing greater than 720p video. I would err on the side of caution and stream in the recommended 720p if you want to watch video content on your DAP. As far as navigation goes, I found the user interface very easy to use, locating songs internally stored on the unit by the song title, album name, artist, genre, favorites, or playlists. There is a built-in EQ profile called Normal for you EQ lovers out there, or you can add your user EQ profiles. I'm not a big EQ user and generally prefer system matching to achieve my desired sound quality. However, I know many EQ lovers that will likely enjoy this feature. For the remaining technical specs, you can go back and watch the first look video and also check out the link to the SP2000T in the video description below for more info. 
For my sound impressions of the SP2000T, I use several headphones, looking for synergistic pairings and good power and current output for each of the headphones. I will also mention briefly how each headphone paired audibly with the SP2000T versus the Hugo 2 to go combo for comparison's sake and reference. Starting first with the Meze Elite, this combo is terrific. In all three amplifier modes with the SP2000T, I had hours of listening enjoyment with this combination. My preferred amp modes were the hybrid and tube modes, but that was the case for almost all the headphones. The tube mode was great with the Elite for a warmer, smoother, and slightly euphonic sound. The hybrid mode was spectacular with the Elite for a more accurate and defined sound. Since the Elite is 32 ohms and 101 dB per one milliwatt, the SP2000T had no issue driving them. Compared to the Hugo 2 to go listening to Eric Clapton's album, The Lady in the Balcony, Lockdown Sessions Live, I found the sound of the SP2000T to sound a bit less defined, especially when in tube mode. The soundstage of the ANK sounds a bit wider than the Hugo 2 to go. However, I found the soundstage accuracy, three dimensionality, and depth to be a touch better when listening to the Hugo 2 to go. Utilizing the hybrid or op amp mode brings the resolving power of the SP2000T closer to that of the Hugo 2 to go combo. The chord provides more detail and information from well-recorded music, while the ANK provides beautiful decay and vapor trail that only tubes can provide when using the tube mode. I enjoyed both pairings with the Meze Elite, and I can see Elite owners having two excellent options to consider. Listening next to the LCD5, I chose to listen to The Weeknd's Dawn FM, a very dynamic album. I tried the SP2000T in all three modes and found the best match for my preferences sonically with the LCD5 was the op amp mode and hybrid mode. I think the SP2000T combo with the LCD5 is very good and highly enjoyable. However, I preferred the Hugo 2 to go combo a little more with this album and headphone pairing. The chords sounded fuller, more dynamic, and seemed to display better control over the Odyssey LCD5 drivers. I suspect planar magnetic headphones that require more current to perform at their best is where the Hugo 2 to go may have an advantage. If I were not comparing sound signatures of the SP2000T and the Hugo 2 to go, I would be pleased with the SP2000T LCD5 pairing or the Hugo 2 to go pairing. Both are extremely enjoyable with the LCD5, allowing me to get lost in the music. Listening next to the headphone from Head Audio, one of the tougher to drive headphones in the group of headphones I listened to with the SP2000T. I chose Hans Zimmer live in Prague album this time around. I did need to ramp up the volume to get to optimal listening levels with the head. However, I still had some headroom and wasn't close to the max volume level via the balance output. Like with the LCD5, I preferred the op amp mode or hybrid mode as each of these two modes presented a bit tighter, more dynamic overall sound presentation. The tube mode was delightful to listen to, giving up more technical presentation for a more euphonic, warmer sound quality. Compared to the Hugo 2 to go, the SP2000T presented more bass energy throughout this album, whereas the Chord Hugo 2 to go had a tighter, more defined lower end. The Chord combo sounds slightly more dynamic and defined. Again, the overall resolution is close with the Hugo 2 to go seemingly resolving a bit more detail and information across the album. Honestly, both the SP2000T and Hugo 2 to go sound very enjoyable with the head. The head is 42 ohms and 87 dB per one milliwatt, making them a little tougher to drive. And for harder to drive headphones with higher current demand, the Hugo 2 to go does have the advantage in quality of sound to my ears. Moving into the dynamic headphones, starting first with the Focal Stelia, I found the pairing of the SP2000T and Stelia to sound spectacular. I chose to listen to Melody Gardo's Live in Europe album for my sound impressions. I preferred the hybrid and tube modes the most for this pairing, giving a bit more natural sound synergy and three-dimensionality to the highly resolving, more intimate sounding Focal Stelia. The Stelia is easy to drive at 35 ohms and 106 dB per one milliwatt, making it a breeze for the SP2000T to pair up with them sonically very well. When using the tube mode with Estelia, I love the decay of Melody's vocals compared to the other two modes, and if I had to choose one mode for the Stelia, it would be a tough choice to make between the hybrid and tube mode. This is one of the most significant advantages to the SP2000T. The differences in sound can be subtle on some tracks, but having the option to have three different sound signatures and several sub options of each is very rewarding for a listener who wants to tweak to get their favorite quality of sound without using EQ. For those of you that love EQ, you have the option in addition to the different amplification modes without having to leave the user interface of the SP2000T. 
compared to the Cord Hugo 2 to go combo, while I give the edge in technicalities to the Hugo 2 to go combo, the addition of the tube or hybrid mode on the SP2000T gives an overall quality of sound that I enjoy more with a Focal Stelia. The euphonic sound of the tube mode works so well with Melody's vocals, seeming to allow them to hang in the air just a bit longer than the Cord really pushing me back towards the A&K pairing for the more pleasant timbre and better musicality. Of course, each listener will have their sound preferences. The Stelia and SP2000T pairing is one of my favorites. Listening next to another headphone from Focal, the Clear MG. For these headphones, I chose to listen to one of TSAV Jason's favorites, Snarky Puppy, the We Like It Here album. With the Clear MG being 55 ohms and 104 dB per one milliwatt, the SP2000T had no trouble driving them appropriately. As far as my preferred amplifier modes with the Clear MG, I prefer the op amp and hybrid modes the most with this album. While the two modes still sounded enjoyable, the other two modes better served this album's speed, dynamics, and resolution. The Clear MG has a bit of a bass bump over neutral to my ears, and the tube mode tended to exaggerate it some. Some listeners may prefer that, but the hybrid mode with the Clear MG hit the sweet spot for my preferences. Comparing the SP2000T to the Hugo 2 to go was fun, as both devices were a very good match for the Focal Clear MG. I find the Clear MG tends to display the sonic characteristics of the DAC and amp that they are matched up with very well. The Hugo 2 to go showed off more of the dynamic slam capability of the Clear MG, while also fleshing out more detail and soundstage depth than the SP2000T. However, the SP2000T allows for a slightly more colorful listening experience with more flavor, with the hybrid and tube modes engaged. Again, both the ANK and Cord are a pleasure to listen to with the Clear MG, and it will come down to a listener's sound preferences. Shifting next to the higher impedance headphones, starting with the Sennheiser HD800S. For this headphone, I chose one of my favorite live albums from Nils Fromm, Tripping with Nils Fromm. With the HD800S being 300 ohms and around 101 dB per one milliwatt, I did find I needed to turn up the volume a bit to get to an optimal listening level. However, I still had plenty of headroom and the SP2000T drove the HD800S without issue. As far as what amplifier mode I preferred with the HD800S, this was most definitely the tube mode and at times the hybrid mode. The tube mode helps some with the anemic base of the HD800S, as well as it smooths out the top end a bit, making them a much more enjoyable, less analytical listen. This didn't surprise me as I have always found that HD800S sounds best with a warmer sounding tube amplifier instead of a solid state or hybrid amplifier. When comparing the Hugo 2 to go to the SP2000T, this was a more straightforward choice for me on which I preferred. While I enjoy the way the Hugo 2 shows off the HD800S's impressive soundstage capability, the overall timbre and balance of the sound signature sounds more enjoyable with the SP2000T on the hybrid or tube mode than the more detailed and defined sound of the Hugo 2 to go. This is an excellent example of why system matching to achieve synergy is so important. Lastly, I listened to the Zima Ferte Open Limited Edition with the SP2000T and chose Pink Floyd's The Later Years album for my sound comparisons. The Verte Open is legendary for how marvelous they sound with tube amplification, and the tube mode of the SP2000T didn't disappoint, creating a euphonic three-dimensional quality of sound. I also enjoyed the hybrid mode with the ZMFs as well. Comparing the SP2000T to the Hugo 2 to go with the Verite Open, I found the SP2000T to sound better overall to my ears thanks to the tube mode. Much like the HD800S, the Verite Open is at home with the euphony and harmonics from tube amplifiers versus solid state. The Hugo 2 to go was still enjoyable to listen to, but I would lean towards the ANK for this pairing. The ZMF Verite Open with the SP2000T was one of my favorite combos I listened to. In conclusion, the SP2000T is a phenomenal sounding, genuinely portable device. It has one of the most fantastic tricks up its sleeve that other portable devices just don't have, actual tube amplification. I feel its sound signature matches exceptionally well with all the headphones I tested it with, with the Meze Elite, Focal Stelia, ZMF Verte Open, and Sennheiser HD800S being my favorite overall pairings. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation of my experiences with the Estellan Current Ultima SP2000T and the information I shared helps you determine if it might be a good fit for you. 
If you are in the greater Los Angeles region or just looking to make a trip to hear the SP2000T or other DAPs, headphones, and headphone amplifiers, the Source Audio Video Design Group's showroom and headphone bar have one of the largest selections of audio enthusiast gear to listen to in the country. In the description below, I will link to the Source Audio Video Design Group's website and more info on the ANK Ultima SP2000T and other audio gear discussed during this video. What do you think of the SP2000T? Let us know in the comments below and show your support today by smashing the like button for us and subscribing for more new upcoming content. Until next time, friends, always remember, let the music be your guide.